Um, again, I'm Lisa Chaffee. I'm the urban forester for the city of Pittsburgh, and I'm really going to lighten things up because we're going to talk about tree planting as opposed to what we've been hearing for the past, uh, from the past few speakers. Um, and just to clarify things, as David being the city forester, my role as urban forester is very proactive. I work actually in the city planning department. Part of my responsibility is, is reviewing applications as they come through the zoning process. So I'm very much um, dealing with trees before they go in the ground, where David pretty much deals with them after they're in the ground. So. Um, tree Vitalize is a, a partnership to restore tree cover in the Pittsburgh region. It's a partnership between DCNR, there's some folks in the room tonight, Allegheny County, Tree Pittsburgh, which I apologize for not changing the slide, um, Western Pennsylvania Conservancy, and um, Allegheny County. And then you can see from our project team all the people that are involved and in, in what it takes to get trees in the ground. Uh, we have an application process for folks that are interested in, in trying to get trees for their neighborhood. Uh, the city, as my role, I do site assessments in, in neighborhoods. Uh, the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy assists with project details. Um, we have tree request forms where we actually ask neighbors to fill out and actually go door to door to try to get more trees on your street. Um, there's a site analysis that goes into this um, to determine the correct uh, tree, if there's utilities, if there's um, fire hydrants, handicapped um, accessible issues, that type of thing. And of course, um, tree tenders, which are very important. Um, if you are selected as a tree vitalized community, you receive assistance with your pick cuts through the city, uh, hopefully, if, if time permits, assistance with planning and implementing your planting day, um, everything from soup to nuts, literally, your trees, your mulch, your stakes, soil, um, loan tools, and if needed, actually um, volunteers to help you. Um, planting types, we have several different kinds. We have volunteer plantings where we actually recruit neighborhood folks to become tree tenders and assist us with the planting projects. We have contract planting, which in some cases the trees are larger, so we can't really do that with volunteers. So we need a little bit more muscle or some, in some cases equipment. And the Mayor's Taking Care of Business Program, which is an initiative to plant street trees in commercial districts to boost economics in the neighborhoods. Um, the role of public works basically is to assist with the pit cuts and sidewalk cuts and pit expansions. The city recently expanded um, our um, minimum requirements for a tree pit to 30 square feet, which is a 3 by 10 hole in the ground at a minimum, which is great. Um, and the city will actually help with digging holes. If you have a, um, a, a project where you might need some holes augered, sometimes we can get public works out to help with that. And, um, pits, uh, and the pu public works department also assists with the PA1 calls. These are calls to make sure that there's no utility conflicts or such you know, in the area with the trees. Um, some things that forestry can also help do is remove trees in advance and stump grinding. Um, you may have a situation, for instance, if there is um, a tree on your street that um, could be removed in advance. Um, we don't have very many ash trees, but just as an example, if there are ash trees and your neighborhood's selected for a tree planting project, we can get in there and try to negotiate getting the tree pulled out, the stump grinded out, a new tree installed in the proximity of the area, and um, have this all done before the trees actually arrive for planting. It, there's a lot to go into to this process. Um, the contract planting involves bid preparation. We basically have to get out ahead of the, the project and figure out, you know, which trees need what size holes, if, this, if it's a green area that just needs to be expanded, if there's an issue with a red brick curb versus a, a concrete sidewalk. Um, there's project supervision involved and time-sensitive projects with volunteers as far as making sure that you can recruit enough people to help you with your project. Um, types of trees that are given. All species are assigned based on site conditions and availability, but the one thing that we preach is diversity. You will never find a new street tree planting project in the city that has, you know, the same monoculture, the same variety of uh, tree going in. We're really pushing um, planting as many different trees as possible, taking into account, you know, if you have a, a busy street where you need a more upright tree or if it can accommodate a wider tree, if you don't have utilities, a larger shade tree, but we're really trying to um, put an emphasis on diversity with our um, all new trees going in and native wherever possible. 
Um, each tree is then um, hand-picked, believe it or not, every single tree that's gone into every single project in the city of Pittsburgh has been hand-picked at a nursery. And what we're looking for is a good root system, for a straight leader, for good branching, that the tree is healthy and disease-free, and so that way when it gets to the site, we know we have a, a better than 50% chance of the tree surviving versus getting a tree from some other part of the country coming in. We really try to do something locally. Um, part of the uh, process is, you know, we find out the street address, the species, we assign a diameter, um, look at the conditions of the site, what kind of maintenance would be involved with that tree, any utilities, um, if there's overhead lines, underground lines. We do have a list of utility compatible trees. Um, a lot of people cringe with Duquesne light coming through and pruning their trees. It's not Duquesne light's problem, folks. The city of Pittsburgh planted the wrong trees at the wrong time and planted shade trees under power lines and, and basically Duquesne Light is just coming through to provide you with the service that everybody pays for. So what we're trying to do is plant utility compatible trees, educate folks and work closely with Duquesne Light so that they don't keep coming back year after year after year to do these routine cuttings when the tree should just not be there in the first place. So we're really trying to work hard on creating um, a better partnership um, with Duquesne Light and we have a project that's um, being um, sort of a pilot project now that we're going to be working on in Southside. Basically Duquesne Light's coming in to do their routine pruning and we're going to try to work with them and get ahead, get out and talk to folks about possibly having trees removed and new trees put back in and it seems to be that if folks think that a new tree is going to be coming, they're a little bit more receptive to the idea of having one removed you know, from Duquesne Light. Okay, um, Tree Vitalize does provide all the tools. Um, this is a Western Pennsylvania um, Conservancy truck. Basically, um, we just need you to show up with your volunteers. We, we provide everything that you can think of to get a tree in the ground. Soil, mulch, um, stakes, trees, uh, every single tool. And it's really amazing to um, pull up to a street on on a Saturday morning and have a few volunteers unload about 25 trees and totally transform the look of your street. And I can tell you that every single neighborhood where we've planted these trees, no matter how challenged a neighborhood, we've had hardly any vandalism of the trees that we've planted because everybody takes ownership of these trees. If you're pushing around a 250 pound bald and burlap tree, you're going to be a little bit more, you know, protective of that if it's in your neighborhood or on your street. And it's been amazing just to see how these trees have totally transform the neighborhoods in the city of Pittsburgh and how people have really come together. Um, it's really magical, I have to say. Um, it really is. Um, tree vitalized communities, once you become um, a, a, a tree vitalized applicant and, and you do receive trees, um, we ask that you complete a tree tender training and I have some brochures in the back, I'm sure Tree Pittsburgh does also. Um, we ask that you help us with watering and mulching and pruning trees for two years after planting, which is a critical time. The trees need to have that extra TLC. Um, it's amazing to see what's happening in neighborhoods. We're having tree care days that are done monthly and basically folks are coming out to meet and taking care of trees that aren't really part of the, tree, the newer tree vitalized trees. They're going into older neighborhoods and we have a uh, certified arborist on, on, along with them to make sure that the proper cuts are made. Um, in some other projects, um, for instance on Butler Street, we planted 2,000 tulip bulbs in the tree pits. And it just really transformed that business district. And if you ride through some other neighborhoods, you'll see that kind of thing happening. Um, and if we really don't encourage planting underneath the tree pits, but you know, you'll come out and water a wilting impatience before you'll think about watering your tree. So uh, the tree ends up getting watered. Um, and uh, we actually help um, bring basic supplies and um, you know, try to convince people to come out and do this on a monthly basis. And just to keep recruiting people to help, um, I believe in 2008 for the city's 250th anniversary, the goal of Tree Pittsburgh was to try to train 250 tree tenders and I believe at the end of this year we'll be close to 1,000 people. And this is a 1,000 set of eyes. David mentioned about calling 311. It's amazing the calls that I get, you know, people that say, oh, this person's volcano mulching, or this person pulled their, their truck into the tree pit, and I'm thinking, you're going to get beat up, you know, because I mean, they're going out there telling people, because now they're educated, and they're alert, and, and um, 
And it's very interesting to see some of the things that are happening. We actually had, um, I got a call from the police department from a person that stood in front of a pruning truck because they thought that they were pruning at the wrong time. Go tree tender. So it, it was, it's really funny to see how this is really transforming. So I think the more information we can get out here, out to the public about how to identify the emerald ash borer and oak wilt and some other things that were talked about today, just keep calling and just try to, you know, be alert. Um, and we really need your help. Like David said, a lot of this can't be done without the public. The Tree Vitalized program couldn't happen without volunteers like yourself who really genuinely care about the, um, the trees in the city and increasing our shade canopy and keeping it healthy. Um, this is just a quick summary about the value of volunteers. This, this figure might even be a little less lower now, or higher, I'm sorry. But um, basically, you know, we get hundreds of people that come out and it's really, and adds up to a lot of money for all your help and in-kind services. And um, there's reasons for maintaining the trees, the economic benefits. In business districts, it's proven that if folks plant trees, people will pay more money for products in those, in those shops. More people will frequent those streets because it's just more of a pleasure to walk down that street. Crime rates are less because of the fact that people are, there's more people. Traffic is calm because people just don't go as fast when they're shade trees, along with all the aesthetic qualities and all the energy savings. I could go on and on and on about it, but you guys all know that. So um, it's really important to just keep pushing and trying to recruit as many people as you can to help us. Um, this is just basically a quick summary of what happens, you know, when you get volunteers. One thing I have to say here in the city of Pittsburgh, we have so many people that show up for planting day that we end up with too many people, which is not a bad problem. But, um, you know, basically once you decide to, to volunteer to be a tree captain, so to speak, or a tree champion, um, we can just help you through the whole process on how to recruit volunteers, keeping them there, being prepared and letting folks know what you need. If you want to come out and give up a Saturday to plant trees, we want you to come, come in, know what you're going to do so you can enjoy the rest of your day. So you're not just stuck standing around or looking for something to do as part of these projects. It's a really fun way to spend your time and we have lots of projects coming up this spring and I'm sure we could give you those dates. You don't have something to do. <laughs> Um, this is just a quick slide. This will be typically something you'll see on, you know, any given, well, most streets. Um, smaller trucks um, have to be uh, utilized, but pretty much, you know, the truck will just roll up with your trees and, you know, we have certain people that um, will get there early that will recruit to come and help us pull the trees off the truck. And then we do a planting demonstration, so every group um, we might break up into groups, but everybody sees exactly how a tree is, is supposed to go in. So if you're not a trained tree tender, you can still come and participate and, you know, take a tree tender class later. And basically, you know, we just go through it step by step so you see how, you know, the correct way of planting a tree. One of the problems that we have with the trees in the city, there's a lot of dead, a lot of the trees that we were, in, that were inventoried, we had over 11,000 plus trees that were dead. This is getting really way ahead of me now. But at any rate, um, and some of those were smaller trees that, you know, basically were just not planted correctly and there was no follow-up care. So I have to tell you, too, that our experience has been that we've had more um, issues with trees that were planted by contractors that didn't do as well than what we did with volunteers. Pretty much all the trees that we plant by volunteer thrive. Um, okay, this is just unloading the tree off a truck. Um, basically just what a tree looks like going into the ground. Um, buried root flares kill trees. Nine times out of ten, what happens is trees are buried too deep. They look like telephone poles sticking out of tree pits. And we really um, work on making sure that the, the root flare is exposed carefully and that it's planted um, at grade. And you can learn all about that in tree tenders. Um, one of the other issues we have is, you know, <laughs> Yeah, it's sad. But at any rate, we see this all over the place. How many people see this on their street? I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy. But one of the things, you know, we do is make sure that the tree's straight. And mulch, making sure that we don't, you know, volcano mulch. And, and there's just some benefits of mulch that you can see. Um, and lastly, just making sure that you really water um, your trees thoroughly. Um, again, I was saying about people planting tree, flowers around trees tend, you know, tend to water more. And you know, 
the funny thing is that you don't really have to be, you know, physically fit to do this kind of thing. Um, I remember a project we did in East Liberty. There was a lady in a walker, like, coming down the middle of this meeting. And I'm like, you know, what is she doing? And she was just, I'm here just to cheer you on. So it's really not about, you know, physically plant the trees. I'm telling you, it is magical. So she was really happy. Um, and then basically we just provide the tools and um, clean up. And it, it just looks like a finished, neat project at the end. You have, you know, freshly mulched tree pits, everything cleaned up, and, and that's it. But I'm just going to go through here really quick. But, um... And just some steps about um, the tree planting. Finalize um, your planning and your dates, and we help you with that. Solicit donations for food and water. Advertise your tree planting day through e-blast or newsletters or flyers. Um, purchase whatever supplies you may need. Some groups actually have um, a kid's table or whatever, and they recruit people to come and help keep kids occupied while they're doing this kind of thing. We ask volunteers to sign in so we can keep track of people and get you back. And then, um, you know, plant multiple stake all the trees and have fun and just you know be ready and prepared to take care of them um, again there's more benefits of trees and this was just uh, this is a, a, a few um, facts that this is outdated but planted um, to date we're close to 8,000 trees total through Tree Vitalize, some of those going into our county parks which was North and South Park um, partnered with um, probably close to 70 groups by now, um, just with just neighborhood groups, CDCs, um, anything you, anybody you can think of that would be willing to put together a project or willing to ha have help us. And thousands of volunteers, you know, people that um, are genuinely interested in their neighborhoods. And the really cool thing about tree um, tenders is you meet people from all other parts of the city and you can have people from every different neighborhood at your planting. And of course, we like to have other folks from other neighborhoods come to other plantings so you can kind of get a feel for how the projects work. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be planting just in your neighborhood. You can help plant trees all over the city of Pittsburgh and increase our canopy all over citywide if you're really interested. And like I said before, we have close to um, 1,000 tree tenders by the end of this year, hopefully trained. The other thing is if you're interested in um, planting trees, again, there's some tree vitalized brochures. Jeff Bergman, who's the Western Pennsylvania Conservancy Director for Tree Vitalizes in the room, could probably answer some questions also. Um, we uh, would love to talk to you about planting trees. If you're interested in a, a project for the fall of 2011, the deadline to submit is the end of March, only because you could see all the work that goes into making sure the right tree is planted in the right place.